Hello, welcome back to another video. Well, welcome back. I don't know. <laughs> welcome to this video. Uh, this is a question that was sent in by Albert on my Discord, and he asked, Hey, what's up with for else in Python? When would I ever use this statement, and how does it work? And I figured I can explain that, so let's do it. All right, so we're going to jump into this. Uh, we're going to start by explaining for else. There's also while else, which is related, but uh, I don't know. I think maybe a little bit less useful, although I did find a few examples in my code bases that used it, uh, but I couldn't find any simple examples. I, I don't really know where you would use while else other than like, <laughs> I guess I did, but like I can't I can't find any simple examples. Anyway, uh, we'll talk about for else. Uh, there's also try else, but I think that's a completely separate discussion. So we'll probably make another video for that instead. Uh, but yeah, let's let's jump into this. So the way for else works is if you have a for loop, so let's just do a normal for loop. For i in range 10, and you know, print i. Something, something super simple like this. And we run this, and it will loop through everything in this loop and print it. Now Python, and this is this is a feature that I haven't seen in any other programming language, although I'm sure there's some others that do this as well. Uh, but Python allows you to have an else statement on your for loop. So I've seen something similar to this in a templating language, but I think it was the opposite, <laughs> the opposite semantics of Python's. Um, but yeah, that's the way things go. Maybe it was in Ruby, I don't remember. Anyway, uh, the else statement on a for loop will run if the for loop exits naturally. Now, um, actually, let's put this in a function so it's easier <laughs> easier to explain this. Um, and we'll just do, actually, we'll just call this main. Easy. And what I mean by exits naturally is that nothing inside this for loop will call either break or return. Or I guess raise is another way that you could exit unnaturally. Um, so if I, if I were to print like you know, else ran, uh, in this example here, since we run through this entire range and we don't ever break out in any way, uh, we will get this else ran printed. So if we run this again, you'll see that we get else ran. Uh, but let's say that uh, maybe we were searching for a particular number in this range. This is a silly example. I'll show you a less silly example in a, in a, in a minute or so. Uh, but say we were searching like if i is equal to five, uh, I found five. Maybe, maybe this is what we were trying to do. Like we were just trying to find a particular needle inside this this haystack. Of course, this is an order in haystack, so it's a little bit. It's it's a very very silly example, but uh, let's let's say we're doing that. Uh, and you'll notice here that when the break runs, that prevents the else from running. Uh, you'll also notice if I did you know return one instead of there, um, that will also prevent the else from running. Although this one's a little bit different and in in this case you know the else is actually doing nothing because you can see like even if i didn't have four else it would still print like that also the same for raise uh raise assertion error oh no <laughs> something like that uh, and you'll see like again we don't print this but also again if we were to you know not do four else it would still work the same way but anyway that's how for else works. Uh, now let's talk about some ways that you might use this. Uh, and again, like you can, in most cases, you can rewrite a for else as having a separate state variable. Um, so like, let's take this example here where we had the for else version. Uh, so let's just copy this. Uh, and this will keep the for else around so I can show you the comparison. That's the for else version, and this will be the not for else version. So you can say like broken equals false and set broken equal to true when we break here. And then instead of having this else here, we could say if not broken, then we would print the, the else ran. You can see if we run this now, uh, it found five, and so it, it broke out. But if we didn't find five, so let's say we change this to 50, You'll see that it, it's, it evaluates essentially the same as the for else above. 
Now, uh, I would posit or argue that this code is a little bit easier to understand. And there are some cases where for else is unnecessary that I think for else is a, a little bit more readable. And we'll show some examples of that later. Um, but I think like, you know, having one fewer state variable, this, this assignment, and then this separate branch, uh, makes this slightly harder to read at a glance. Whereas if you understand for else, I think this is pretty straightforward what it's doing. Then again, like for else is not something you see in all programming languages. So, you know, it, it might not be the easiest thing to see. So, you know, judge for yourself, talk, talk amongst your team, if they're comfortable with statements like this or whatever, and like, you know, decide on something that works for people or educate people. That's always a good thing too. Uh, but yeah, that's how for else works. While else is basically the same, uh, except it's a while loop instead of a for loop. And again, like the same condition holds. So if we had like, uh, you know, dev while else, um, man, what is a, I don't know, i equals zero while i is less than 10. This is a contrived example because I couldn't find any realistic examples for this. Um, while i is less than 10, print i, i plus plus one, uh, while else ran, just call this in main, while else, and we'll put a little divider just so that we can see what's, uh, what's going on in each place. Oops, <laughs> that's not what I want to do. Um, so you can see here that this while condition eventually became true without this loop breaking unnaturally, and that resulted in the else block running. But again, if we, you know, Take this same, I found five thing and put it into here. Uh, do we print that first or after? Yeah, we printed it first. Okay, we'll make it the same at least. Um, you can see here that because of this break statement, the else block of the while loop does not run. So they both work the same. I find many fewer applications for this, but then again, you know, I, I find that for loops are much more useful than while loops in Python anyway. Okay, so, um, the, the like canonical example or like <laughs> the easiest to understand example of for else that I found that was interesting uh, was trying to implement the index method on strings and the, or maybe not the index, the find method. <laughs> one of them raises an exception and one of them returns negative one. Whichever one returns negative one, we'll, we'll try and implement that one. And basically the way it works is you have, uh, I don't know, Obviously you wouldn't actually implement this in practice. You would use the one that's already built in, but we're, we're gonna, we're gonna do this instead. Um, and we'll say like S, um, actually let's just find a character cause that way that'll be a little bit simpler. Um, and so S will be the string that we're searching in and C will be the character. And we'll return an integer for the index that we find in that string. And so you can basically loop through your string and try and compare this character against it. If we don't find it anywhere, then we would return negative one. And this is just how find works. Or maybe it's index. <laughs> I don't remember which one. <laughs> You'll have to look that up for yourself. Um, and so the way that I would implement this is for s character in s, uh, you could also do something like for i in range len of s, and then like if s i is equal to c, and do it like that. Um, but I, I usually find if you're writing for i in range len, uh, like this is usually a smell in Python and usually means that you're doing something wrong. Um, but let's, uh, <laughs> let's do it the right way. Uh, and if c is equal to sc, then uh, idx equals i, although we need to... <laughs> Dang it, this gets more complicated. I forgot about enumerate. Um, so enumerate is a special built-in that changes an iterable into an index number and then the thing you would already iterate over. Uh, basically, it gives you an index here. And if we found the index, we can set that equal to i. Otherwise, if we, if we run through the entire string and don't find any character that matches the one we're looking for, we want the index to be negative one. And then we can return that. And this is kind of like the, the basic example. And if we run this, i3-i 
Yep, we can ignore that system exit. Stir find care. Uh, and if we did like hello and looked for an O, we would find it at index four. But if we looked for like a, a Z, we would get negative one. But anyway, there's like a, a short example for that. Um, a little bit of bonus content for this video. Uh, I was looking for all of the cases in my code bases that use for else or while else, and these are the ones that I found. Um, I'm using my tool that I wrote called All Repos, which allows me to grep through all of my code bases and basically find, you know, find interesting things. Um, and in this case, I found all Python files, which is what this part does. Then I ran this file called t.py, which we'll show in a second. This is actually kind of the, the clever part of this, and probably something I'll split out into another video at another time. Uh, and then I wanted to limit it to just you know, Asatilly, Anthony Wright's code, and pre-commit, because those felt like the interesting ones. And these are all the places that I use for else or while else. Um, let's actually look at t.py, because it's, it's short enough to explain it. Um, Basically, I wanted to use the AST, the Python AST, to find all of the places where the else block happens for a for loop or a while loop. And this is a nice little class here called Node Visitor, which makes it really easy to build one of these. Um, and this is kind of, a, kind of a similar structure to how I write my own linters or sometimes code formatters and use this same approach. But basically, you know, I load all the files that are arguments, I parse the AST using the built-in AST module, then I instantiate one of these visitor things, and it has a visit that does recursive descent for you, so you don't have to implement any of that stuff. Uh, but basically, like, you know, if the node has an else block, add it to all of our locations, and, you know, once you've parsed everything, you'll have a, a list of locations there. I'll let you guys pause here if you want to read more about that, uh, but let's let's show some of the examples that I found in some of the real code that I wrote. I have those pre-opened over here because I, I did a little prep work for this video, unlike my usual videos. But um, So here's like one example where I use for else. This actually comes from uh, my text editor called Babby. And uh, what, what this chunk of code is doing here is it's trying to find which syntax highlighter to use for the file that it has open. Uh, so like this is Python syntax, so it's highlighting it with the Python grammar. And each grammar in this particular case has a matches file function. So we're looping through all the grammars. And if we find one that matches, we break out of the loop. But if we don't find any of them, we use kind of the unknown grammar. Uh, and if we, you know, babby foo.unknown, this doesn't match any of the grammars. So even if we type, you know, Python syntax here, it won't syntax highlight it. There's, there's no syntax highlighting enabled here. There is trailing white space, but that's, that's implemented in a separate way. So this is like one example where I, I felt for else was pretty straightforward in, in, uh, in usage. Oops, that's not what I wanted. I want to switch to the next tab. Uh, here's another example, which is slightly more complicated. This one is, again, in Babby, in my text editor. This one is figuring out how lined endings works uh, for the particular file that's open. So it's trying to find if there's Windows new lines or normal new lines. And so we're basically looping through every line in the file. And then we loop through the two different types of line endings, so either Windows line endings or everything else line endings, and we're counting them. We also want to, at the same time, build up a list of lines that don't have that line ending on them. And uh, the way I'm doing that is basically slicing up the end. There's actually a cool function that will be out in Python 3.9 that does this for you. Uh, I forget what it's called. <laughs> it's like strip suffix or something like that. I don't know, but it's, it's pretty cool. Um, it will basically just remove this, this ending for you. But anyway, uh, if it has one of those new lines, then it will break here, and so the else won't run. But if the line doesn't end in some sort of new line, this would really only happen for the last line in the file, um, and only sometimes, because you, you really should end your files with new lines, but <laughs> for another day. Uh, but yeah, this will still append the line, but not do the special slicing. So that's one, of, one other example. Uh, and another case that I had was uh, dealing with error cases in a loop. So this is a test from one of my packages called CovDefaults. And what this test is doing is it's uh, it basically retrieves a set of regular expressions, which is what this is here, and then makes sure that at least one of those regular expressions matches each of these strings up here. 
Uh, and this is a parameterized test, so each of these lines is actually a separate test case that gets automatically expanded by this decorator here. And my for else loop is basically saying, you know, loop through all of the regular expressions, then loop through all the lines in the source, and if any of them match, then break. Um, but if none of them match, it's an error, and so we should raise an assertion error here. Now, of course, this is the same as this code here, um, but I felt that it was, you know, slightly more readable to use a for else. Anyway, those are some examples from my code. Hopefully this was a little eye-opening and hopefully you have some newfound appreciation for the for else statement or while else, although I don't know if you'll actually use that, but I really like this this uh, this for else statement, so hopefully you do too. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you guys have additional questions, you can either leave a comment below or show up at my Twitch stream or hit me up on Twitter or whatever you want to do. Uh, but yeah, thank you all for watching. Have a good one.